Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for lesson 6.5, Analyzing and Sketching Graphs. Our essential question is, how can graphs be used to represent relationships between quantities without using numbers? You'll need your Jaguar jots on section 6.5, a pen or a pencil. You might find a highlighter helpful, your problem solving skills, and today, bring that inspiration with you along with some bright ideas. Today we'll be looking at independent versus dependent variables. This is how all graphs start off with this idea of your independent variables is on the horizontal axis and your dependent variable is on your vertical axis. In the center is where your graph goes. They're read from left to right increasing and top to bottom increasing. The independent variable, these are this is the information that we have, the things we control, usually times and days. The dependent variable is usually what we want to know, but need to know information in, in order to know it. And it's usually money. So for example, if I told you that if I work for three days, I'm going to earn $500. So three days, and then I go up and then I read across and I said, oh, I earned $500. So that's how graphs usually work. So let's look at example number one. The graph shows the distance from home versus time. And we're going to describe the changes in each graph. So we can see that there's one, two, three different sections of this graph that we need to talk about. Do not get confused with the up and down being speed, like faster and slower, like the downhill is slower and the uphill is faster. That's not what it's talking about. This is how far away you are from home. So as you go up this line, you're going further away from home. And as you go across this, you're going further along in time. So you need to understand that, those two pieces before we can talk about this graph. So if I'm A compared to B, A is further away from home than, than B. B is close to home, A is far away from home. Time-wise, C is just starting off, like I'm a minute, minute away, and D means I'm like an hour away. So you have to kind of get those two things straight in your head before any of this makes sense. So let's talk about that first part. So as I'm traveling along this, I'm getting further away from home and I'm getting like in distance and it's taking me some time. So it's an increasing distance from home at a constant rate. So over, it's not like take, I'm not changing how long it's taking, I'm going at a constant rate of time. If I look at the next section, am I getting closer to home or further away from home? Well, it's going down and so I'm getting closer to home so de decreasing my distance from home and again at a constant rate of time. So my timing is taking the same amount of time. It's not, it's not like going, taking me less time or more time. It's not squiggling in time. It's called a constant rate of time because it's a straight line. And let's look at this last one. So what do you think this last one is doing? Go ahead and pop that into that answer right there, do you think you're getting further away from home? So an increasing distance from home or a decreasing distance from home? And what about that rate of time? Do you think that rate of time is constant or in, or not constant? So if you said that we're increasing our distance from home, you are correct because we are getting further away from home. And yes, it is at a constant rate of time. So now let's look at this one. Again, as you're going up, you're going further away from home. As you're going down, you're getting closer to home. This is over time what's happening. So on this first one, I want you to go ahead and pop this in and what do you think is happening? Go ahead and answer that. So if you thought we were increasing distance from home at a constant rate of time, you're absolutely correct. Now this next one's a little bit tricky. What do you think is happening to that distance from home? And is time passing or not passing? Well, think about it, time is always passing. So we stopped at a location and we have no speed. 
but we are just staying there. So we're staying there, but time is passing. So it's kind of like stopped at a friend's house, but I didn't, and time is passing, but there's nothing changing. There's just time's passing, but nothing's happening. And then the last one, what happened at the very end? Getting closer to home, moving at a constant rate. And what happened at the very end? I actually got home, right? Because I ended right here. So I'd even add that to it um, that I got home. So I'd actually even add that until I reached home to my, to my explanation. So now let's look at both of these side by side and let's make three comparisons from those graphs. One thing that you might want to say, it depends on you. What was that last thing we added? The first graph never goes home, but the second graph does. So one graph you're getting, you're consistently moving away from home, but the second graph goes home. Second graph has a stop in it, but the first one's always moving. The first graph is always going the same speed, but the second graph is going faster on the way home. How did I know that the second one's going faster? Well, this one's steeper. Remember, steeper lines mean we're going faster. So steeper lines mean I'm going faster, and these lines seem to be at the same slope even though this one's down, even though this is a negative slope, it seems to be kind of at the same pitch, just in the opposite direction, because this is a 90 degree, right? If they're 90 degrees, they're opposite reciprocals. So they would be going at the same quote unquote rate. So we could say that there may be other things that you notice too, but those are the three things I picked out. Um, if you could pick out more things, that would be even better. So in these next two examples, what we're going to be doing is making the graph that goes along with the words. I'm actually going to challenge you to make that graph before I do. But let's get the axes set up. A soapbox derby picks up speed at a constant rate while it travels downhill. It continues to pick up speed until the racer applies the brakes after crossing the finish line. Once the brakes are applied, the car decreases speed at a constant rate until it stops completely. So we are definitely looking at speed versus time. So time dictates how fast we go. So what I'd really like you to do is I would like you just to take a pencil and sketch in what you think. And then I would like you then to maybe take a pen and sketch in the answer I give you because understanding what you thought and then what I gave you for an answer is really going to help. Okay, so now that you've done that, let's talk about this. We're going to pick up speed at a constant rate. So because I said constant, I'm hoping that you remember constant means a straight line. So we're going to pick up speed at a constant rate as it travels downhill. So most of our brains think traveling downhill means I need to make a line that goes downhill, but that's not what we're doing. We're making, we're picking up speed. To pick up speed, I need to go up this line and I am traveling in time. So I'm going that direction. So I need to pick up speed. I need to go faster. And now here's my finish line. Let's say right here's my finish line. I need to apply my brakes. Well, I'm going to apply my brakes much faster than I picked up speed. And so it's going to go like that until I stop. Because it says I, I picked up speed at a constant rate as I traveled downhill and I pick up speed until I apply the brake after crossing the line. So right here is where I crossed the finish line. And then I applied my brakes and then I stopped completely. So this is where I stopped. That's why I'm at zero. My speed is zero now. So it's totally not what our brain is thinking. Our brain wants to make the picture of going downhill, which means we want to go downhill. But we have to start here where our speed was zero. Then we increased our speed over time. Now our speed has to decrease over time, but it has to do it super fast. So now let's look at the last one. As the price of a product increases, the amount of the pro producer supply increases a at a decreasing rate. Okay, this is supply and demand. So supply and the price. So as the price 
of the product increases, the amount that the producer's supply increases at a decreasing rate. So we're still going to increase, just not as fast. So we're not looking at linear anymore. We're looking at something different. So go ahead, pause that, puzzle, puzzle it out a little bit, and then come on back. So we're still increasing, but we're increasing at a decreasing rate. So how can I still increase, but slow down? The only way I can increase but slow down is to curve. So I still need to increase over time, but not quite so fast. So I'm doing really, really good. And then I need to slow that increasing down. So I'm still increasing, but not as fast. These are tough and they take time to understand. So what I'm going to challenge you to do is I'd like you to find a news article or something that talks about time versus money or time versus supply or any of that. Find something in real life and see if you can draw a graph that goes along with it. Thank you so much for showing up today in our lesson. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.